At a gathering after memorial service, we decided to use a window shot to get another perspective on this scene. Broadcasters know the value of window shots and use these opposite type of shots whenever possible. On your next job, look around for windows and see if there's some place you can incorporate the window shot in your videotaping. Please remember that zooming in is not the same as moving in. When you zoom in from a distance, you can get things, but you're limiting the depth of field. You're also limiting perspective. That is that angle that you can get between the object at the side of you and the object right in front of you. So whenever you can, I always tell camera people when I'm training them to keep the camera on the wide position and move in whenever they can. If you're doing a wedding or some speech where you can't get in, that's different. But, if you're in a situation when you can get closer, it can make all the difference in the world. Here's a local TV crew. Notice how close they get. Here's a shot with the camera zoomed in from the distance. Here's the same shot with the camera up close. Many videographers have the mistaken impression that getting close will ruin the mood of the subject, so they just zoom in from afar top broadcast professionals, whenever possible, have the camera lens on wide and move in instead. They know the secrets of getting close without distraction. My friend and expert cameraman Joe Correa explains this best. When you talk about blending with people, uh, there is a difference between blending with people and mangling with bodies. When, when you deal with people, you're dealing with personalities. And the bodies are just a vehicle through with which people travel around. So if you feel comfortable with people, you can be right in the middle of them. And it's fine. If you don't feel comfortable, if you feel that you are obtrusive, you will be obtrusive because that attitude will reflect and people will feel as uncomfortable so, with you. So how do you feel comfortable? What if, what if you say as a videographer, well, I'm just not comfortable getting close to people, so I'm going to stand in back if well I'm... it sounds a little bit like me that you can be the background videographer and do okay i mean look we have many of those that make a living from the back of the room but if you want to be more than that you know and it's like saying uh, i don't i don't mind fish but i'm not going to be fishing now you you got to get out there where the action is and you have to be part of it you have to open your heart to to what's going on to be a part of the action to like people to get involved with them and then be sensitive to their needs. Some people need more space. And as you get closer to a person, you after a while know how close you can get before you begin to invade their space and they feel uncomfortable. So it's kind of a dance. It's, it's like anything else. When, when you go out on a date the first time, you just kind of, you know, check the water, see how close you can get without, you know, being rejected. Well, in a group of people, it's pretty much the same. And the answer lies within you. Just be loose, relax, go in there and uh, get what you need and immediately go somewhere else. I, uh, sometimes I have nowhere to go, but in the moment I catch that moment, I'm out of there. And I go somewhere else even if I don't have nowhere to go. The reason for that is gives the people the feeling of comfort that you're not hanging on them, that you're just capturing moments and that they were important on some, at some moment. And so therefore you're not invading on anybody's space at any one time, but you everywhere all the time. And all of a sudden, and the other people that see you being close to that person, they want to be just as important. So they are going to be more receptive to the opportunity. So within half an hour of being in a public event, people like to see me get close to them because they feel, oh, you know, he noticed me. So it, all of a sudden, it's a reversal. People want you close because that's a form of approval. Now, I'm using Joe as a subject here. If anybody saw the movie Jaws, they saw a shot where the person all of a sudden sees the shark coming toward them and the background changes. We're going to show you how to do that. And we invite you as a humorous thing to use this in something that you do sometime. We have the neutral density filter on. We zoom in really tight and we notice the background is a little bit fuzzy. Now, Joe is framed from about his shoulders to the top of his head. And... If we can almost recreate that shot from Jaws as we walk in and we pull back at the same time and Joe acts surprised. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. Now we're going to try that again. Again, remember what I said, practice. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to zoom in real close. And we're doing this handheld. You could do this with a, a dolly if you wanted to. And you're looking out, Joe, and you're seeing that there's 
some shark coming in, all of a sudden you're getting surprised, surprised, and more surprised, shocked. Uh, okay, we'll try it one more time again. And basically you do this till you get it right until it looks really nice, okay? Here's the shot in him. He's looking out over the ocean. All of a sudden he looks startled. Uh-oh, shies. There we go. Here's some more examples of the Jaws shot. Try to remember to practice this one a lot. Do it on a job because using it can be very difficult. In this particular example, the tray almost seems to come toward the screen when in fact nothing whatsoever is moving except the camera and the zoom on the lens. We used the back of a car going in reverse to get this shot and we even tried it in the other direction. In my hand I have a big camera, but I also use small cameras. It's important to remember on this video, it doesn't matter what camera you're using, the same shots apply. And one shot that you really should consider doing is when you're framing your foreground, look at what your background is and see if you can tell two stories in one shot. In a way this is a linking shot because I define a linking shot as any shot that is telling two stories with the same shot. But in this one there's no movement. You see this on broadcast see a shot in the foreground and then if you notice carefully in the background something else related to the story is going on in the background and you know what coincidentally it's right in frame now was that just an accident I think not the camera person was smart enough to either position himself so when he's looking and getting the foreground with the background he's moving around or he's smart enough to go to the foreground people and, or the foreground thing and move it in, into place and say can you just sit there or can you move there or actually move it if it's an inanimate object to get the background or the camera person just tells the foreground to stay still goes to the background and asks, either physically moves the background if it's inanimate or ask the people would you just sit over here can you move that flagpole over here can you do that then he goes back or she goes back and videotapes the foreground with that thing happening in the background. So when you watch broadcast television tonight, you're going to see this happen again and again and again. You're going to see that background shot that happens to be just coincidentally in the same frame. That separates a regular camera person from a broadcast camera person. A broadcast camera person, in as many shots as possible, and it's not possible in every one, looks for a shot where the foreground tells the story, but the background backs up that same story. Sometime in your video career, you'll probably be videotaping a band. Now, too many videographers set up their cameras and then worry about a clear shot once the band begins to play. The secret of videotaping bands, though, is you taking control as the videographer and positioning the mic stands before the band starts. As you'll notice in this video, no matter what shot we cut to, you can see all the different band people. This is because before the band started, we positioned the mic stand so nobody would be blocked. Also, we're using three cameras here. This camera is a low angle. We recommend if you're going to use multiple cameras when videotaping a band, that one of them get a lower angle for some nice perspective. Just to review, you want to position the mic stands before the band begins its set. You want to position your camera so you get different angles like you see here. And you also may want to consider occasionally doing a zoom in, which normally we don't recommend, but it's all the rage with music videos. If you do a zoom in, it's a good idea to cut to the next shot before the zoom end finishes. One way I got really good at camera technique is I actually met up with a cameraman and he allowed me to follow him around on the job. I did this numerous times and it got me very, very good at camera technique. And all you have to do is go down to a local station where, and you ask who's the best camera person in, at, the, at the station. Or you just check around and find someone who's a really dynamic go-getter camera person and say, would you mind if, you, if I can watch you do some of your camera work or you could show me some technique? This way you can be surprised at how fast you can improve your camera technique by simply 
mentoring with somebody who is really good at camera technique. It really worked for me years back and I still do it today. I can always learn award winning camera men out there and camera women know that there's always another shot to get. There's an, always another thing that they can learn. So they network. Don't be afraid to find somebody who's working for a television station or who has a video production business and is just known as the best in the area to ask that person can you hang out with them and, and have them show you, you know, what they do. Most people that are up at that level do not mind sharing at all their secrets because they know that if the whole industry is brought up, it's better for everybody. Ten years ago, I got good by following around my mentor, broadcast cameraman and now producer, Dave Ferry. The people around you are the ones that are going to train you, you know. The, the veteran cameraman next to you on the other camera in the news studio who's been doing it for, for 15, 20, 30 years is the person that's your best friend right then and there. Because they're going to, if you approach them right, and you're willing to learn from them, you know, not, well, hey, this should be easy, this shouldn't be any ah. problem. I mean, that person's been doing it for th 30 years, and they take a lot of pride in what they're doing. And you need to understand that, and you need, they're your best friend, if you're willing to learn from them and they're willing to teach you and the and most of the times the way they're going to be willing to teach you is if you're willing to learn and you show a little respect towards their craft and and say wow man that was that was a great zoom or that was a great pedestal move you know how do you do that yeah i like low angle shots i think it's because we it's a uh, you know, we, we see through our eyes, and depending on your height, between five and six feet, that's your frame of reference. You get that camera down on the floor and look up a little bit. It shows you a whole different perspective. Or, you know, uh, things are oriented towards our eye level, five or six feet. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot from, from down low. You just see it at a different angle. And sometimes you can get some real interesting shots. You get that camera off your shoulder or get it off the tripod and, you know, get it a little lower. Most of the work that I've done has been purely the technical side, so I've always had a producer or a reporter asking the questions. But the reporters that I've always respected the most the, are the ones that they know what kind of an answer they want going into the interview. They know the questions that they need answered. And if that person doesn't answer that question the first time around, or doesn't specifically doesn't answer it the way that they want it, uh -huh they'll ask it a hundred different ways until they get the answer that they want. That, and they'll phrase it so many different ways. Manipulating the story. I mean, how, where do you draw the line there? It, it, well, it's, it's, it's your code of ethics. Yeah. It is manipulating the story if you're trying to put words into the person's mouth. It isn't manipulating it if the person stumbled through the answer the first time and the That's second time and the third time. And you're trying to get them to say it in a coherent way. A good producer, a good reporter has already done a lot of background, talked to this person over the phone before they got there, understands their side of the story, and is just trying to do, the, their job now is to get that person who is not used to being on camera, who is a little nervous, to, to tell the story the way they told it to them over the phone when they first talked to them. You remember earlier we talked about Waldo, the wide, the angle, the low, the linking, the depth, and the opposite. Well, I like a lot of opposites, things that you don't always expect. A point of view shot that's an opposite shot that I like is called the insider shot. Now, an insider shot is also used by broadcast camera people all around the world. You can either fake an insider shot or make it real. An example, an insider shot would be opening a refrigerator. You, you need a small camera to put in there. Uh, another insider shot would be opening the mailbox. Another insider shot would be someone loading up the car with the camera inside. You can do these for real by putting a camera in the refrigerator. If your camera is too big, you might have to simulate or to simulate the inside of a can or something. But it's a really advanced shot and that it's not used that often. But when it is used and it's used right, it really gives you a perspective from that subject's point of view. Now, keep in mind that when we say subject, that doesn't necessarily have to be a person. That can be an inanimate object. The important thing about insider shots is they take you from the outside to the inside to give you a different perspective. 
The best way to understand insider shots is just to show you them so you can understand what we're talking about and how they can relate to the work that you do. Broadcast camera people have a secret that most amateur beginning professionals do not realize, and that is the high angle shot. Now everybody knows high angle shot, you just get up and get a high angle shot, but where do you get one from? You know, when the broadcast pros go out on a job, the first thing that they do is scout out different angles, and one of those angles is looking for where they can get that overhead God's eye view to give you the beautiful perspective, the beautiful depth. And most people think, well, there's no place for me to go, but if you look carefully, there's always a ladder or a hill or a tree branch you can climb up on, don't get yourself hurt, of course, or there's a balcony, or there's steps, or there's a porch, or there's some place you can go up and get that high angle. The secret is to become aware that you have to get it and look around. And you're going to find at 80% of the jobs, there's some place you can go to get that high angle, even if it's the top of a building. Always look for where you can get that high angle shot. It might be the top of an escalator. It might be the top of a ladder. But they're out there. They're all over the place. And broadcast professionals are using this on television every night of the week. Tonight, I want you to watch television and actually look for where they're using that high angle shot. And when you realize how often it's used, you'll start using it. The only way to really use it, though, is to look around on where you get to the job site and find what particular place there is where you can get that high angle shot. And even if you just use it once, it adds a lot to the beauty of the images you're trying to create, and it makes a two-dimensional image, a little bit more three-dimensional image by giving that establishing overhead God's eye view. Videography is the only art form I know where part of your job is to get paid to watch TV. Watching TV is an integral part of what you do because it allows you to see different trends. You know, if I had thought when I was a child that I'd have a job where part of my job was getting paid to watch TV, I, I would have thought they were crazy. And now I'm living that dream. Watching TV is so important because trends happen and you want to be up on those trends. For example, humor is becoming more and more part of video simply because on television, the remote control has made people want to flip by commercials. Now, as a result, commercials are adding more and more humor and telling more and more in story and getting more and more fast cuts to try to keep your attention. They're doing everything from making everything look grainy to making things look out of focus. But mainly, the trend these days is to try to make it funny and entertaining to tell a story. So you want to watch the commercial as a story. Now, how does that relate to you as a videographer? What you may want to do is to start adding a little bit more humor, adding a little bit more fast pace, trying to tell little stories and different things you do based on what you see on TV. And of course, the other great thing about watching TV, the main reason is you take your pen or pencil and a notepad and you jot down all those things you're seeing that these professional videographers are doing that you might not be doing. And even if you are doing some of them, isn't it great to get a reminder sometime of, oh, I haven't done that shot in a while. Many of you remember the days of tube cameras when it was considered taboo to point your lens into the sun. These days with chip cameras, nobody has to worry about that. And that's why broadcasters every night on television are doing shots where the sun peers into the foreground right past the subject. If you want to be a top videographer, you must add this shot to your list. It won't hurt your camera and will add a nice touch to the work that you do. This is best done before 10 a.m. or after 3 p.m.